Hi, I'm Tristan Caulfield, and this work on modeling organizational recovery is joint work with my colleagues from HP Labs and University College London. Malware, particularly ransomware, is a growing concern for business. Ransomware attacks such as NotPetya, which infected tens of thousands of computer systems at Maersk, uh, can have a severe impact on IT systems, causing downtime and data loss. Naturally, uh, it's best to try and prevent this initial compromise uh, and prevent ransomware from getting a hold uh, in the organization, but this happens anyway. And so there are questions about how, it, what is the best way to recover and what policy strategies and technology choices can enable organizations to recover quickly and effectively. In this work, we present an approach to modeling recovery that can be used to help think about these questions. Once a device has been hit by malware or ransomware, it's typically uh, reinstalled to a fresh state or uh, recovered from some uh, full backup. Uh, there's different approaches to this, so full backups can be used, which uh, have captured all of the contents of the device's hard drive uh, and then restore it to the state it was in before. Other times, uh, companies have a corporate image which is prepared, which contains uh, the operating system, the recent patches, and any standard software for the company. And uh, more modern approaches use uh, unified endpoint management things, uh, such as Microsoft's uh, Intune system, which basically download a recent uh, Windows image and then automatically apply recent patches and uh, updates and uh, security and domain policies uh, during the installation process. And there are also different ways these things can be installed. So. Uh, you know, you can use a USB stick uh, containing this image to uh, to you know reinstall the computer, or you can uh, boot over the local network perhaps, or um, some approaches uh, use a kind of bare metal approach where a system is built into the computer into the BIOS that's capable of running uh, recovery agents uh, fetching new images securely. Uh, over the network and installing them, or uh, in some cases uh, these devices contain a, a separate uh, embedded storage which allows versions of the operating system image to be kept on the device and this way recovery can be done very quickly uh, even if there's no network connection. With the model we present in this paper we're initially focused on just on looking at these different recovery methods, the USB uh, over the network and embedded. But uh, we also want to actually be able to apply this model uh, to different organizations. So different businesses have different structures and they have different priorities. So we need a model that's capable of being adapted to these different configurations. And we want to use it to be able to ask questions like, how do these different recovery methods perform? given the different structures inside these businesses. The models in this work are executable models written in the Julia language using the sys models package which we have developed. This approach uh, uses ideas from distributed systems and so the models uh, are built using locations, resources, and processes to represent the system. And all of this has a, a very strong, uh, rigorous mathematical foundation underneath it. The executable models we build are based around a discrete event scheduler. Processes are functions in the Julia language, and these uh, have methods to claim and release resources at different locations. And this is how the behavior of the system is uh, is encoded into the model. Now the approach uh, we take to modeling is compositional and this means that uh, smaller models can be composed together to create uh, larger models and this composition happens at uh, specific places uh, called interfaces 
uh, and interfaces define how the uh, locations and processes of these models fit together. Now the compositional approach is useful because it means that uh, large systems can be broken down and modeled um, in smaller parts and then kind of composed together again. So it allows you to manage complexity uh, when, when doing modeling. And it's also useful because it allows for things like substitution, where you can uh, take uh, one submodel that's part of a, a larger composed model and replace it with another model as long as the interfaces match. So in the diagram here, you can see that uh, model C can uh, replace uh, model B, which is composed with models A and D on the left and right. We use a compositional approach to uh, model device recovery here. Uh, we have three separate models which get composed together to uh, produce the final model. These are the server model, the network model, and the device model. The device model uh, captures the structure of the company. So it basically the different offices the company has, how many devices are in each one, uh, um, and also other locations such as hotels or internet cafes or uh, employees' homes where these devices might uh, might go. It captures the movement of devices between these locations. So for example, if companies uh, have employees with laptops, these employees might move, the laptops might move between different locations. And the device model also uh, implements or captures the different recovery methods that we're investigating in this work. Now, some of these devices are desktop computers and they are uh, obviously connected over a LAN connection. Some are uh, connected over, for example, perhaps slower Wi-Fi or if you're at home, uh, a very slow internet connection potentially. And the network model is what uh, defines essentially the, the characteristics of the network. So this uh, basically creates a, a model of, of a network where uh, basically different endpoints can send packets across and it models uh, congestion. So if too many devices uh, are transmitting things over a a uh, segment and its bandwidth is exceeded, then those transfers will throttle, they'll slow down. And so this is useful for modeling device recovery here. Uh, it's essential in fact, because if many devices are downloading uh, updates or uh, operating system images at the same time, then the performance of the network might be affected. The network model also uh, routes uh, packets uh, to their uh, intended destination. So when uh, devices uh, request a server, in, uh, request a operating system image from the the server, uh, this request gets sent to the server, and then the operating system image is is transmitted back. Um, and lastly, yeah, the server model just uh, models a server that is uh, responding to these requests and serving up uh, operating system images as they're, uh, as they're requested by the clients. Uh, because we've done a compositional approach here, this server model could be actually changed in the future to uh, to something a bit more complicated, perhaps modeling, uh, you know, a data storage or backups and things like this as well as uh, instead of just serving operating system images. The network endpoints are where these models compose together. They are the interfaces. So um, the way we've designed this is that uh, you can change the parameters about the number of offices, the size, the number of devices in each thing, and uh, this will actually create a model with the appropriate number of interfaces. Uh, it'll create the network model with the matching interfaces uh, on the other side that will then get composed together. And so this allows us to be quite flexible, so we can you know, go to 
you know, a smaller or larger organization, change the parameters, and then have a model that reflects the characteristics of that company. We use this model to look at a few different scenarios. So first of all, we look at uh, a few different types of recovery mechanism. So uh, USB recovery, where all devices are using uh, USB recovery. Uh, network uh, recovery, where all the devices are uh, downloading uh, recovery images and over the network. Uh, an embedded scenario, where all of the laptops uh, are using an embedded uh, storage. So they have a local copy of the uh, operating system image to reinstall. Um, while desktops are still downloading over the network. And a scenario where just a, a portion, 30% of the laptops use the embedded thing and the rest are downloading from the network. In addition to the different recovery mechanisms, we also look at varying duration and intensity of attack. So intensity of attack describes the probability of uh, different machines being hit. So if it's higher, uh, you're going to get uh, more, uh, uh, more machines being compromised. And the duration just specifies over uh, you know, the length of time over which the attack takes place. And we also look at scenarios where the uh, image server is remote or uh, they have a image server uh, local to the office, so the speeds are faster. We run the model 100 times for each uh, parameter combination and uh, this gives us a total of uh, f about 14,000 uh, executions of the model. And uh, what we get out from this is uh, essentially an idea of how the different recovery methods perform uh, for given uh, attack intensities and durations. And um, what we look at is the average uh, recovery time uh, and how, you know, we can also see how congested the network becomes. Looking at the uh, network throttling first, we can see that when the attack duration uh, is shorter, uh, for example, two hours, the, the blue lines, the, uh, the, basically the network speed drops uh, a lot more than when the attack is spread over longer periods of time. This is intuitive because uh, if you have a larger number of devices recovering at the same time, the load on the network is going to be much higher. And this slowdown caused by the uh, network saturation affects the recovery time of the devices. This graph shows us how we can start considering the uh, performance of the different recovery methods. So uh, this is showing the average recovery duration, the recovery time for devices uh, in the different scenarios and uh, you can see how the different recovery methods perform uh, compared to each other. So a couple things to observe are that as the attack probability increases, the number of devices hit uh, obviously goes up and therefore uh, recovery time tends to take longer as the, um, the network congestion uh, basically slows down downloads. And this matches what we saw in the, the network graph before. Uh, another thing to observe is that the uh, all network, um, where all of the devices are using the network, uh, this scenario uh, basically tends to take the uh, the longest time. So devices are slowest to recover using this, um, and also that the embedded strategy, uh, where all of the laptops have an embedded storage containing a local copy of the operating system image uh, tends to be extremely quick and um, this is because having those devices uh, with local storage means that they don't need to actually access the network to recover and so this speeds up not only the recovery for those devices but it also means there's less congestion on the network for the other devices which are recovering over the network. The work here is just uh, a first step. 
So we're only modeling a few types of recovery and we're only modeling the recovery step. So where devices uh, get re-imaged to a fresh uh, operating system state. We're not actually modeling any of the data recovery uh, yet. So we have a bit of work to do in the future. So we can start looking at other recovery mechanisms, um, such as you know calling the help desk to get uh, you know support. Uh, we can start looking at information loss. So devices can uh, you know have data information on them uh, that needs to be backed up. So we can model the uh, generation, the creation of this information, uh, how it gets backed up, and then how uh, it gets recovered. Uh, and then we can see how different strategies, uh, you know, result in different amounts of uh, information loss when an attack happens. Uh, we also want to look at different values of different devices. So, uh, for example, uh, companies might not want to pay extra for every single device to have the embedded recovery, even though this is the quickest way, because it might not be cost effective. But for some devices where uh, you know the the functioning of these things is is critical, it might make more sense. For example, if you have uh, a person uh, traveling about to you know make a sales pitch or presentation or something, it's pretty important that they be able to kind of uh, you know have a, a functioning computer. And so you know it might be worth prioritizing these for more expensive uh, recovery methods. The uh, model can also be expanded to include actually better uh, ransomware models. So we have the compositional approach to the modeling here. And so what we can do is we can actually extend the model, add an extra one, uh, which uh, models the ransomware and have this ransomware model then send, um, basically send attacks over the network model to the devices in the device model. And uh, this will trigger them to uh, you know, become compromised and then begin their, their sort of reset and re-imaging process. And what we'd also like to do is actually test this with a company at some point. So once we've uh, increased the um, sort of level of detail in the model to capture these, these things we just talked about, then uh, it would be nice to be able to go to a company, uh, actually go through the, the process of data collection, parameterizing the model, and then use it to actually evaluate uh, the choices for that company in reality. This has been a, a quick overview of our work. There are many more details about our modeling approach, uh, the models themselves, and the various scenarios and results in the paper. So please feel free to, to have a look to get some more detail there, and feel free to contact us with, with questions if you have any. And thank you very much for listening.